What Starmer is saying is his solution is not more money. And that is quite a thing for a new Labour prime minister to say, because he is saying today, the NHS is, re this is you know, paraphrasing what he says, he, he, but using the, the words, he says the NHS has reached a fork in the road and we can either increase taxes on working people to pay for more of the uh, health care required by an ageing society or we can reform. And then he says we need to, there's a case of reform or die and, and Wes Streeting, the health secretary, has uh, been echoing that message as well. And that... It felt to me that that's the first time I've heard Starmer kind of summon up his inner Tony Blair. You know, he's now talking about radical healthcare reform, you know, and that's quite a different message than you've had from the Labour Party in recent years, which is there's not enough money going into the NHS. The reforms are important, but the thing which will make the biggest difference if you get the right reforms with value for money is a big injection of resources without a big... Well, it's got to be think? higher than 3.5% in real terms. And if Labour wants to have delivered change by the next election, that injection of resources has to happen now. You can't... I mean, we actually waited. We built up investment in yeah. the NHS through the first term, big push in the second term. Keir Starmer... I don't think Keir Starmer can afford to take that long. There is no way on earth there will be a marked improvement in health outcomes or perception of the health service without a substantially bigger increase in health resources over this parliament than we've seen on average okay. in the last 15 years. Right. And if you say he's not going to do that, then he's okay, it's but, not going to work. Okay, so then, do you disagree with that? Uh, I don't think it's simply a question of money. Well, yeah, but oh. I didn't say that. No, no, but I'll, I'll come on. I didn't say it was simply a question of money. Okay, the question is, I, can you do the reforms without the money? Well, I don't think there's going to be the influx of money into the NHS that you are talking about because I'm not sure where it comes from. Because, first of all, you've got the Labour government saying we're not going to increase taxes on working people. What you did in 2001 was you increased national insurance. We did. And that paid for money to the NHS. The last politician who tried that was actually Rishi Sunak as Chancellor of the Exchequer. He increased national insurance. He called it the NHS and social care levy. And Labour voted against it, which I thought was a very stupid thing to do, even though, of course, as an opposition you're very tempted to do these kind of things, but it, it closed the door to an obvious route for funding for the health service. The second thing that Brown and Blair did was they brought the private sector in through the PFI schemes to build the new hospitals and GP surgeries and so on. And that's all died in recent years, partly because of, you know, it was felt that the public sector was ripped off in some of the PFI contracts. Let's not get into that. It's mainly because long-term interest rates are low and therefore the value for money case is much, much harder to make now. But PFI's died and the NHS, and as you just said, Labour is not saying we're going to partner with the private sector, either in the capital programme or indeed in the provision, i.e. getting private companies to do hip replacements, which Tony Blair and Alan Milburn wanted uh, 20 years ago. So where is this money coming from? They're not going to increase taxes and it's, they're not going to bring the private sector in in some way to part finance it. You're left then with squeezing all these other government departments, education, defence, culture, local government and whatever. And, and Wes Streeting himself is saying that's not really an answer because you end up, in his words this morning, with uh, uh, the NHS with a country attached to it. In other words, the the uh, entire budget, sort of discretionary budget of the country ends up being spent on its healthcare system. Well, I think if, if you and I were having a meeting um, in the Treasury or in Number 10 or a bilateral, um, at this point we would say uh, there's a problem, Prime Minister, because uh, we've actually got to the crux of the issue, which is what is the fundamental budget judgment for the parliament. But unfortunately, we're out of time and we're better pick that up at the next meeting. And we may need to have to pick that up ourselves in our ne next podcast um, uh, recording um, because, you know, there isn't time today to kind of go through that whole what is the fundamental fiscal strategy for the parliament argument. But the thing I'm just going to kind of um, end on this section by saying is that we were praising West Streeting for going about using the past in the right way, you do the diagnostic, you then win the political argument, and then comes the solution. They've published the diagnostic today from Darcy. Darcy says there is a big funding gap as well as a he need says, to reform. Been, look, hold on. He says there's a capital funding gap. That, I, money hasn't been invested in the infrastructure of the NHS. He doesn't say there's a staffing shortage, which was the classic complaint. In fact, there's a, he says, he points out that 
that staff numbers in the NHS have gone up under the Tories and in hospitals have gone up 17% in the last five years. I thought that was quite, again, you know. The Health Foundation, independent think tank, has a report out saying they think that the annual funding gap is £38 billion a year. Now, yeah, I, but don't you've also got, I don't know if 38 is right, but it's bigger than five. I'm just pointing out that you've got a Labour Prime Minister who's saying, I'm not promising to spend a load more money. I'm not making an argument that there aren't enough doctors and nurses. I might accept the Darcy claim that the Tories didn't invest enough in health uh, capital, but I've got no great plan in my budget to increase capital spending on the NHS that we're aware of yet. But, but George, so George, aren't you, aren't well, you've you... got waiting lists yeah, yeah, this but... long in the millions that is clearly not enough capacity to clear the waiting list. He may say that for a system in equilibrium, there's enough doctors and nurses right now when you've got right. millions waiting, you catch up only through more capacity. Right. And you. so you're saying they've got to find a way to increase health spending, right? I think that is the obvious implication of the first stage of their diagnostic. Right. And I'm saying I'm all for the reforms they talk about, fixing social care, switching from hospitals to GPs, and I would say to find a way to bring the private sector back into uh, building out the NHS estate. But I would observe those are all incredibly difficult things to do in practice politically. You go and say to people, your district hospital is no longer going to be the place where you go for your operations. We're going to downgrade some of the hospital services because we're investing in GP surgeries. That is hugely controversial. Mm. And social care, which we will come back to. There's a reason why no one's got an answer at the moment to social care because no one wants to take the incredibly hard political choice of either spending huge amounts more of taxpayers' money on it or finding ways to tax people to pay for their own social care. And so, you know, I, I, I'm actually, you know, I'm not going to get into a sort of partisan thing of whether I accept the kind of West Streeting uh, attack on the Tories. But I like what he's saying about reform. I like the fact he's being kind of brave in a sort of yes minister way of saying I'm going to take the biggest reform since the NHS's inception. But it's all going to be in the execution. And I think this, of almost all the topics we talk about, is absolutely fundamental to Labour's electoral chances at the next election. Because if I, they if they haven't sorted the NHS in the in the sense of people markedly see improvements, waiting lists are coming down, people are going to say, well, what was the point of having this uh, Labour government? <laughs>